come paint along with me. So here I'm starting with a large one inch flat brush and I'm beginning with the background. I'm using more water than paint to build layers of color so that it's varied darker blue on the edges of the sky and getting lighter as I go towards the horizon. And I add in the ground with blends of green, beige, and some brown. Um, when I put in the clouds, it's much thicker and I keep doing thicker and thicker paint, less water. Um, and that allows it to show through all over the background because it's uh, more opaque. As I start the tree, I am using a number four round brush and I'm starting in the middle and that's just for me to shape, create a shape for the tree. So as I go down to the base, I thicken it up and as I go up to the branches, I widen it. And with the branches, I'm doing a staggered lines or lines that are broken. Um, simply because I'm not doing as much blending with the branches and with the tree trunk. Instead, I'm coming in and doing different lines. So different lines for highlights, different lines, different colors for shadows, and then different medium tones. Some that are a bit more yellow in brown, more red brown, and then some really, really dark brown. So that I have a lot of variety and that's what's going to create the texture and the look of uh, younger like branches, older branches, um, thicker branches, thinner branches. It's, a, it's the different kinds of color that gives it a little bit of depth and, and 3D effect. Um, also kind of like an outlining and almost a little bit cartoony. It's not exactly realistic because the, all the pieces aren't blended together. But it's a, a fun technique just to be able to apply color next to each other um, and not fill in the whole aspect and then kind of go over different areas but fill it in as you go with with multiple colors and trying to shape um, areas of the trunk and different uh, branches and here this is very fantastical this is not how branches grow normally but um, here I'm curving them around um, having a lot of fun filling in gaps um, trying to make that from the center is the largest and then as you go out a little bit further it gets thinner and smaller it's almost like one of those trees you can use for a chart where you can use it as like a family tree or you can have like different animals in between all the gaps, uh, birds, squirrels, that kind of thing. Um, it's very spaced out. I fill it in um, mostly with leaves, but uh, you can play with that and, and put anything you want in there. As I start developing the roots I want to make it a bit more 3D so I've actually made more of a foreground so I go back over the grass in a darker green and I build that up so now you can have kind of the backgrounds divided in three you have the the sky the field in the back and now the darker green foreground right at the base of the, the tree and that gives it a nice uh, grounding effect it feels like it's it's home now it's earthed in in the ground so I come in now with um, some light beige and give some highlights. Some of the areas where the branches were a bit thick, I kind of go over them with the base so it makes them thinner. Um, and then I try to shape the different areas and bulges around the tree trunk and the tops of the roots. Again, I'm not doing much blending here. It literally is just putting different colors on top of each other, next to each other, thin, thick um, uh, brush strokes just to kind of either give like a glistening effect or like, like the highlight. Or in here, some branches just are purely in beige versus being in the medium brown or the dark brown. I filled up most of the, the area with the branches. You could make it smaller, you could make it larger, you could make it more on one side than the other. It, the composition can be done in, in multiple ways. And as the paint dries, you notice that it doesn't always um, show as brilliantly as when it was wet. So sometimes I kind of keep going over certain areas, trying to get that brightness, that level um, where the, the paint's a bit more transparent than I would have liked, and I want it to pop more. And as you do layers as well, it, it also gives it more of that kind of 3D effect and um, slowly and gradually gives more color and depth. So here I've even uh, changed the shape of the trunk, given it a bit more thickness, rounded it off on the edges there. 
here I start on the leaves. So here I did um, very simple shading of just like a light green and a dark green and half the leaf being light, half the leaf being dark. Some of them I would try to draw the veins in a lighter green, um, other times I don't. So I kind of varied it. I like the idea of various colors kind of gives the impression of light coming through the trees and the light reflecting off the leaves in different ways. Um, I could have come in and did all of them one green color and like the light green and then painted a dark green on portions of them. Here I went back and forth deciding which shape and way that I wanted the leaves to go and, and playing with it, um, making it a bit more random. So yeah, I, I didn't have um, as much of a plan of where the where the light was coming from, though the light is coming from, looks like from behind. Um, it could have been planned differently so that you could have light only shining from one direction. Some of the leaves on the dark brown didn't show up as much. I could have painted um, white behind it first and then um, green. But here I just kept going with the, the greens um, over any part of it. And then I had a few green leaves falling um, and also on the, the ground as well, just to kind of tie in the leaves from the top to the bottom as well. And the size and very, like I kept to a certain shape for the leaf, but I, um, the sizes varied all the way through. <laughs> And as I went through and noticed that some of the sky I'd covered a bit more than I would like to, I actually highlighted in a sky blue where I'd outline around some of the leaves and around some of the branches just to get the blue to peek out a bit more. And I used some of that light blue even touching some of the roots and some of the highlights. So sometimes putting um, colors that you don't normally expect to be on a tree like a, a sky blue or a, um, a brighter yellow or a nice um, kind of orangey um, light red um, really does make the, the tree come alive um, even though they're kind of not as natural colors to, to what you think bark would be but they kind of bring out the shape and I think that was a fun way to, to give it that kind of illustration effect versus a realistic 3D effect. And yeah, every time you look at your painting, you can see different areas and little points where you're just like, oh, I would like to see a little bit more definition there. I'd like to leave a bit of highlight there, maybe some shadow over there. Um, which leaves do you want to come forward? Which leaves do you, what branches do you want to come forward? Um, what brush strokes maybe were a bit too thick that you'd like to thin it out or were too thin and you want to make them a bit thicker and more prominent. It kind of, as you view it, as you're painting along, you kind of check yourself and your painting and how is it, how is it working for you? What is it telling you? Um, where you'd like to see more of one color or another, you can kind of go back and forth. Here's with the, the, and that's it. Here's the finished piece. Hope you enjoyed it.